y bienvenidos. Welcome to Mala Mama Cooking with Love. We drive connection, unity, acceptance, and love across all cultures and generations. Just want to be very clear that all are welcome here, and we are delighted and grateful to have you listening. You're about to join us for our weekly adventure, where we chat with entrepreneurs, chefs, foodies, artists, and nutritionists who are helping us to connect and learn. We'd love for you to visit our YouTube channel where you can learn to make delicious guacamole, chimichangas, mocajetes de queso y chorizo fundido, crunchy tacos, enchiladas, flour tortillas, and so much more. Private message us if you need any help as we'd love to help you make these recipes successful. And please subscribe to our podcast and leave us a review. We'd love to hear from you. And for Mother Teresa, spread love everywhere you go and let no one ever come to you without leaving happier. So given who tonight's guest is, I would suspect that you're going to leave craving delicious, authentic Mexican food, and probably happier because, to me, food makes us happy. I am delighted to have Millie Martinez from Mexico in my kitchen with us tonight, and I actually found her on Instagram quite some time ago. I was strolling through and saw these amazing photos on beautiful plates They reminded me of Mexican food that my mama would make for me or that my tias would make in their homes. And I have just followed her from that time forward and been so inspired. She has been featured on NBC Latino, Yahoo News, The New York Times, HuffPost, Lifehacker, BuzzFeed, The Kitchen, She Knows, Healthline, All Recipes, Cosmopolitan, Medium, and many others. And one of the most amazing things about her really robust blog that not only has, like I mentioned, all these delicious, authentic Mexican recipes, she actually has a weekly planner that lists out breakfast, lunch, and dinner. She has a section that goes over her Mexican pantry with food that she has in her pantry as well as tools. This woman is really about helping us learn to make Mexican food in our kitchens making it easy for us to do so. She is originally from Mexico, and she has been in the United States now for the last 10 years. She started her blog so that her teenage son would someday hopefully start recreating some of her Mexican food that his mama used to make for her family. And her meals, as I mentioned, are traditional home-style meals from across Mexico, great influence from the following states. And I'm going to probably mispronounce them, but Tamilayas, Nueva León, Veracruz, Puebla, Estado de México, Tabasco, and Yucatan. Those are all places that she has lived. So with that, welcome to Mole Mama. Mole, so great to have you here. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Thank you very much for the invitation. I'm so glad you invited me. Well, it's like I said, those pictures, I love your pictures. So first of all, for our listeners, I would recommend that you start following her right now on Instagram, (laughs) but you're going to get hungry. So go find Mexico in my kitchen on Instagram, and you can also check out her website. Um, But can you tell us, Millie, how did you, you know, I know that you started this for your son, but can you tell us a little bit more about Mexico in my kitchen? Because it is such a lovely blog. Uh, thank you very much. Um, when when I moved to the states, uh, I one of the things that we crave a lot was Mexican food. This is the t- second time I come to live to the to United States, but the first time uh, we live in Ohio, and um, because of my husband work, and in that time you couldn't find Mexican food or Latin stores or anything like that. So we create a lot of Mexican food. Uh, so when I went back to Mexico, I was eager to know more about how to make all those recipes and to uh, recreate it. And But when we decided to come back to the States, uh, I wanted to be able to write down all those recipes for my son. Uh, because my son was born in Ohio, and um, so I was thinking, well, we now live in a very uh, 
you know, multicultural environment. The world is getting smaller thanks to the internet. And you don't know if she's going to marry an American or a Mexican or, or someone from another culture. So I want to have a place for him to find the recipes we cook at home. And at the beginning, I wanted to write a book. That was my idea, to, to write a cookbook. But then when, when I, see, I saw that there were people starting blogs about food, that's when I decided to start writing the blog because I thought, well, that way he can look at the recipe anywhere in the world. If he moves to another country, he, he will have access to, that, to the recipe. That's how I, everything is started. That is such a wonderful story. So is he cooking these recipes already or not yet? Uh, you know what? He doesn't cook much. <laughs> uh, he's a young man now. He, but he has the, the, the sazon, the way we call it in Mexico. He has whatever he cooks when he cooks it is really tasty. He, he got it in him. He now he now works 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 with me. He he handles the uh, all the he helps me with the pictures. He helps me with the editing in English because my English is not that good. Um, and and he handles mostly the business part of the blog. I told him, you know what, I wanna uh, be uh, focused on the cooking and the recipes and you handle the rest. So that that's the part that he handles. So yeah, without, without thinking it, now we are a team. We are, he's very involved in everything about the blog. That is outstanding. So you actually, he's your partner, your business partner. Cause I was going to ask you about these pictures. They are gorgeous. I'm like, do you take all these pictures? So is he taking the photos <laughs> for you? Cause they are so beautiful. Yeah. He, yeah. He, he started helping me last year because you know, with age, I don't see very well. <laughs> yeah. So, so, I, so I, 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 I play the food and I tell him, this is how I want it to look. But he's the one that nowadays is taking the final picture and the one that is going to come out in the blog. Yeah, he, he's the one that's helping me with that. I do the editing, or, uh, but he, he, do, he takes the, 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 the pictures that come finally in the blog. He's the one that takes those ones. Wow. And you asked me 10 years ago that we will be doing this together. <laughs> Never in my mind I, I will believe it. What a beautiful story. And his, the pictures are outstanding. They really are. And that's such a huge, as you know, such a huge part of a successful blog is having amazing photographs. And so you started something for him and, and now you've made it into a business together. That I love that story. So does he yeah. sample, is he eating the food while you're making it or is he eating it after you make it? Yeah, he, he eats the food after that, but we store a lot in the freezer. That's good. That's one of the things that we always make enough to have in the freezer. So whenever we we don't have time to cook, believe it or not, sometimes we don't have time to cook, we just open the freezer and, and defrost something that we have there in the freezer. Yeah, but he, 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 he likes all kinds of food. That's one of oh. we we he grew he grew up mostly in the Washington D.C. area where we used to live for a long time. Uh, it's a very multicultural environment, and he loves all kinds of food: Indian, Thai, Chinese, uh, Moroccan. He he loves to taste new foods. I do too. I love so many different types of foods, and I've actually found I think that some of the Mex the Mexican dishes um, are very similar in some ways to Indian cooking. Some of the spices yes, they ex ex Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Is uh, they're very similar. It was surprising. I have never taken cooking classes, and but when I was living in the Washington D.C. area. I took one class with an Indian lady, 
And when I went to her house and he she showed me how to to make chapati and how to make a uh, potato dish aloe gobi, I was looking at her like a you're making flour tortillas. <laughs> <laughs> they were doing exactly what we is like very similar. Like very similar. The only thing is that they are more spicy. Yes. I, I agree. Mm. It's very similar. And before we move on, I also have to ask you about these dishes. In some of your photographs, you're using what I would think very traditional looking Mexican plates. Are they from Mexico? Are they from your family? Or do you, are you just using them for photos? Yeah. They're gorgeous. You know what? I have found them through the years. Uh uh, my husband and I we love antiquing, and surprisingly, you know, in those antique malls in Virginia and Pennsylvania, uh, Maryland, we found dishes from Mexico, and I have been collecting them through the years. Uh, for me, they are like a treasure. I uh, but now that we moved to Texas, uh, you can find a lot of, um, uh, especially the the clay terracotta, the, the clay dishes, you find them even in the Latin stores or at the flea markets. Uh, but many of the dishes, especially like the Talavera dishes, uh, I had find them at thrifty stores or at um, antique stores and people ask me, people sometimes ask me, where do you buy it? I want to buy it. And I tell them, I have, buy, I have find them in different places in the country. Where I go, I always look in, I always have in mind what I want to find. I don't know, I always go to one of those stores and say, I know there is something inside waiting for me to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> something <laughs> special and, 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 and always happens. Something, I, something, I always find something unique and something from Mexico that people regular people would know thing they could find at an antique store. Okay, I would love to go antiquing with you because I love these plates. I'm obsessed with your plates. <laughs> I'm addition to your food. So yeah. I can't See, believe people how, love it. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. They're beautiful. So I can't believe how quickly our time is already going together or since we've been talking, but we're going to take a very short break. We're going to be back in a minute with, and we're going to chat more with Nellie Martinez from Mexico My Kitchen and hear all about her amazing Mexican foods. So we'll be right back. Hola, we're back speaking with Meli Martinez from Mexico in My Kitchen, and she has been telling us about her her journey to become a blogger, and if you haven't yet, start following her on Instagram so that you can be hungry like me. So, Meli, we were talking about this business that you created for your son so he would have access to your recipes, and now he's actually your business partner doing your photography and and other parts of your business, which is just amazing. But I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how you learned to cook. You said that you haven't taken really classes. So did you learn from your mother, from your abuelita, from tias? How, who taught you how to make all this amazing Mexican food? Uh, well, um, I, am, uh, I belong to a family of eight children. I am the second. I have an older brother. And... Uh, in my generation, when you grew up in a large family, you're supposed to help in the, uh, in the house and in the cooking. So that was something that it was implied that you have to cook, you have to help in the house. And I always like eating. I always like tasting food. I like it going to my own house. To, I invited myself to for lunchtime. My mom used to get very upset when I would come back from school and she said, you want to eat? And I say, 
I used, I used to talk to my aunt's house, and so I ate there. And my mom is like, what did you eat there? We had food here. People is going to think that we don't have food here. <laughs> and like, well, this is because she was making this soup, and I wanted to try it. Uh, <laughs> so I always wanted to go to other people's house just to try the food. I always wanted to taste food. And in the summer, since we were so many, I think we, my mom just to get crazy with so many kids at home. She, we spent the whole summer at my grandma's house in Veracruz and the farm and the, in the ranch, in El Rancho. And we helped it, uh, grind the corn. That was my job every day to grind the corn to make the tortillas. And I, I learned from my aunts. I learned from my grandma and, and from looking at my mom, uh, how, how to cook, and I always love cooking and eating. I think I like more eating than cooking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have to meet you someday in person because we sound like we're we're lost, long lost sisters. <laughs> I, I I understand you. <laughs> I love eating so much and cooking, but I love eating. And I grew up on a rancho on a dairy farm, so oh, uh, okay. Yeah, so we used to make everything. My mom was very old-fashioned, and she would make everything from scratch. And um, when we make the malas, oh, my goodness, she would grind. We'd have to grind the corn to make the masa. And then, you know, she'd, yeah. she'd, she'd cook down the fat to make her – to ha- or cut cook down pork to make her, her lard for the masa, and then the chiles for the mole. Oh, my goodness, it was days and days of work, so – yeah, and the whole ladies of the family would get together and make tamales and also worship about everybody else. Yes, you're right. It's the gossiping thing. So let me ask mm-hmm. you, so when your family made the tamales, do they make them with one hoja or do they make them with multiple where they tie the ends? Um, we usually make it with one, the one that are with corn hosh. Um, but we prefer to make the one with uh, banana leaves. Oh, okay. Yeah, because uh, those were more popular where we are in the Gulf of Mexico. We, we make both, but people prefer the ones grow up in banana leaves. Okay, so I did not learn how to make the, those. I only learned to make them with the husks, but my mother's tamales are hu- huge. They're giant. And we had to tie them on both ends with string. And they were so yeah. so hard. So, but. Yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't learn how to make it that way. We just used one. And if one wasn't up, you just uh, place another one just to overlap so that, that you can have an, enough room to grab it. And we usually do not use a string of the same corn hush to wrap it we don't we don't tie them yeah you just fold them we just yeah. we just fold them mm-hmm. yeah yeah and I know how to do those now but that's not what I grew up doing my mom used to tie them but I was I'm always curious because I haven't found anybody else yet that, that whose mother made them no. tie them like who else had to suffer like I did um to do that so you were in Veracruz so was were you eating a lot of seafood there too when you would go there um, I am from Tampico, and Tampico is a seaport. Okay. Uh, it's a, a lot of seafood. Uh, part of my family worked at the seafood um, uh, uh, what are the distributor centers. So we ate so much seafood that I I didn't like it. It was too much. My mom used to make. Like shrimp, rice with shrimp, shrimp with vegetable, shrimp fry, shrimp, shrimp any way you like it, and fish. So I, 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 I didn't want to see seafood because I see it so often. So for many years, I didn't want to eat seafood because I grew up eating it. It was like too much for me. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. But yes, we we grew up with a lot of uh, seafood around. 
Yeah, so so did I because we were close to the ocean as well. But I loved it. But that's okay. It's okay if you if you got tired of it. I never did. Okay, so I have to ask you. You have so many recipes on your blog. What is the most popular one? I think it's the the pozole, the red pozole, pozole rojo. Is one of the most popular recipes in the blog. People really like it, and and you see the comments of people say people use it for parties and like just last year somebody say I make the pozole for a for a wedding and three hundred people uh, have pozole from Mexico in my kitchen that's, and everybody likes it. That's so one. That, that, that's one of the most popular the the pozole. And um. Now, you said when you started, you were thinking about doing a cookbook. Are the, do you have any plans now to maybe do a cookbook sometime in the future? Well, we just signed a contract this week <gasps> for our first cookbook. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, uh, the yes. Uh, I, I have been approached three times to make a cookbook over the years, and I was no very happy about the way people wanted us to work, and and I wanted a book that could be as close as possible as the way we have things in the blog. And finally, uh, this year, uh, an editorial company contacted us, and we had been working with them, negotiating a a contract, and we finally signed the. The, as a matter of fact, we just sent the sign contract this morning. So we finally are going to have a book. Thank you very much. Wonderful news. Outstanding news. So um, when will it be out? So when when might we be able to buy it? We expect the book to be out for se- September 2020. September okay. 2020. Is- going to be a lot of work uh, but we are very happy and excited and looking forward and especially because especially me because I just told my son did you know that this is something that we're going to do together <laughs> so that's what I think that's very exciting for me because we are making it together that is fantastic I am so I'm so happy for you because I think Thank you know you. I don't know if they told you this, but um, book sales are down, but cookbooks continue to go up. Like so, there people aren't yeah. buying books, but they're still buying cookbooks, which is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I still buy cookbooks. <laughs> <laughs> so do I. <laughs> Definitely still yeah. buy. So now that you've had this business for ten years. What's what's been one of the or some of the biggest surprises about about having your blog? Um, I think um, the response of the people. One thing I didn't expect was to receive so many emails from people telling me that the what I cook is like looking at their grandma, their mom, their madrina, their aunt cooking and people saying that I never learned to cook from my mom. She passed away some years ago and now when I see your recipe, it's like she's telling me how to cook. So I'm learning to cook with you, the recipes that remind me of my mom or my grandma. And that, for me, has been the most valuable thing I have from the blog, to be able to help someone else create new memories for their family and for the children. Uh, I used to be a teacher in Mexico, an elementary school teacher, and I I always believed that uh, the, the teacher has to be able to transmit knowledge to the kid and if the kid is able to do it that's the best uh, reward for you 
And when someone is able to create a dish that you did, is for me, that's the best thing that can happen. That is absolutely beautiful. Because that's exactly how um, I felt when I saw your photos. It was like, oh, it looks like my mama's food. <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> when I first saw it. And every time I see, you know, a new post from you, that's exactly what I think. I'm like, oh. Yeah, that, that's one of the things are, that I, I, just want beautiful. To, I, I want to show the people because there are so many misconceptions in so many websites and they say they are authentic and things like that. And home cooking in Mexico at home is way different than what you find at the restaurants. And that's, that's what I want people to, to know, to know what is the, the home cooking. The Mexican home cooking. And and you are doing that for sure. <laughs> Definitely. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we, we have to take another short break, but we will be right back with Mill with Millie from Mexico in my kitchen. Please stay tuned. with Millie Martinez from Mexico in my kitchen and we have been talking about our amazing authentic Mexican recipes and on the break we were chatting for a minute about her beautiful logo um, Mexico in my kitchen it's just so gorgeous and Millie you said you had a little story Thank about you. can you share that with our listeners please yeah about the name uh, one of the things that I yeah. always you used to say at home when cooking is, I try to create the recipes as close as possible with the ingredients that you have available here uh, to make a Mexican dish. And, and I always used to tell my husband, if we are not able to go to Mexico, we are going to bring Mexico to my kitchen. And that's why we decided to call the blog Mexico in my kitchen because I was bringing Mexico into my kitchen. That is a great, I, I love the name and, and you do, you absolutely do bring Mexico into, I think all the photos that you do and the folks that are making your recipes. And so that is such a beautiful gift that you're giving everyone. And um, I know that we spoke briefly about, you know, some of the biggest surprises that you've had um, since you've had your blog, but can you share with us any of the some of the biggest challenges? Because it, it's a lot of work to have the kind of blog that you have. Oh yeah. <laughs> so can you talk about that? Yeah. Well, what, what, yeah. One of the challenges is that, uh, yeah. uh, for example, I had to learn how to take pictures. I have to learn a little bit about the technical stuff that goes about maintaining a website. There is a lot of work that is goes behind just posting a recipe and, and a picture online. There, there is a lot of work just uh, posting a recipe online. Uh, sometimes take me three days because there is a lot of things that I had to do before. Also, the ingredients. Uh, living in the north of the country is not easy to find all the ingredients that you want or that you need to recreate a recipe. But that's a, it's a challenge, but also it helped me to help another people while giving them ideas or substitutions. If you don't have this, use that. Uh, if you can find this ingredient, well, you can have, because I always was thinking about somebody else in the same situation that I was. If I am someone from Mexico in another country and I cannot uh, replicate your recipe, how can I make it as close as possible? So that those are some of the challenges. Another thing is that English is not my first language. Um, 
and somebody has to help me editing what I write. Like my my husband used to do that. Now my son is the one that that checks everything I write be- before they it goes online on the website. Well, that is fantastic that he he can help you and. Um, it's so admirable that with English not being your first language, that you're doing this in both languages. It's it's really very impressive that you are doing this, and um, yeah, because I think it's very very helpful um, for both. And I know that when I went to your blog and I saw your your pantry, what's in your pantry, and I clicked on that. It was so wonderful to see that a lot of the ingredients that you're, you know, you're suggesting I have in my own pantry. You know, I definitely have the same oh, rice, I have the same, you know, chicken nor, I, a lot, lots of different, the same ingredients. So, but um, I get asked that a lot too, as far as um, for my YouTube channel. And I'm like, oh, that's so smart to just have a list of all your ingredients for people. That's fantastic. So, but very helpful. So you Thank talked. You. You're welcome. You talked earlier about your most popular recipe on your site. Are the, are there some recipes that are your favorites that maybe aren't as popular? Uh, yes, I think like uh, maybe because they are time consuming. But I love the adobos. The recipes I love to make uh, recipes with dry peppers. And I had the asado de puerco. That was the first recipe. It's the first recipe I posted in December 15, uh, 2009. And that was my first recipe. And that's one of my favorite dishes. And then mole, poblano. But I think that people get a little bit of scare working or cooking with dry peppers. And, uh, and maybe... That's why they don't visit the recipe or they just go look at it and they say, oh, no, there is a lot of work. Uh, but it's, it's, it's a recipe worth doing and, and make it, making a double batch so you can freeze and the next time you want it, you just defrost it. Yes, mole is definitely one of my favorites, and I would agree. Um, it's it's a lot of work with, working with the chilies, but I think once you – Learn how to do it. The benefit of using real chilies is so amazing. The flavor is so amazing that it's well worth the investment in time if you're doing something special. And now one of my mom's mole dishes that she used to make is with crunchy pork. Have you ever made that dish? I crunchy think my pork? Mother made, yeah, my mother might have made that up, <laughs> but, but I've never... It's also a recipe that I haven't seen in very many places. It's like, like carnitas or chicharrones? It's more like carnitas. Like, it's more like carnitas mm-hmm. with, with mole poblano. It's so delicious. Oh, my goodness. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know what? That that one happen a lot that people sometimes uh, ask me for recipes with a very special name, and then they say, Maybe that's not the right name, but my mom made it up. So that's how I know it. <laughs> it's very common. Yes, definitely. So um, mm-hmm. as, as far as, um, you know, how long, when you're going to do a new blog post, how long does it take you? Now, you mentioned that, you know, it takes mm-hmm. some time to get it on the site, but do you have to cook for a whole day? And, and how many photos do you think your son does to get that one photo that you're actually Well, with, between, the, with, between the two of us, I think we take like 100 pictures. Wow. And then we take like 100 pictures, and then we have to decide uh, which one is out of the best. We, we take a lot of pictures. <laughs> yeah, but it actually, uh, you know, the easiest part is cooking. Because I love that. So the easiest part for me is cooking. But then I had to stop to write down what I am doing. So that, that's one of the things that I, because if I don't have to write down, I cook really fast. I like to do my thing. I add the seasoning as is needed. 
according to my taste. But then I had to stop and write down what I'm doing. And then uh, we had to take, it's challenging to take the picture because you have to take the picture right away. And what it is still looks fresh because if the place sits there for 10 minutes in the table, it's not going to look the same. Maybe it's going to dry, maybe, I don't know, the vegetables are not going to look fresh. Uh, so that that taking the picture is something that you have to do it really quickly and you have to be able to play it again. Sometimes we have to play two or three times um, until I like it because I am the one that say this is this is the way I want it. And uh, but it is, and then I have to choose the pictures, edit the pictures write the recipe, do the research if I want to add, because I like to add a story about the recipe. I believe a, a recipe has to have a background. Where does it come from? What region of Mexico? The cultural background. I, 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 I want people to be able to sit at the table and to know that that recipe, the, the food they are eating, come from somewhere, that he has a cultural background. Uh, so it takes me, if I want to try some, I, I cannot write something in one day. I think, I think it's maybe like three days. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. Because I wanted our listeners to understand like how much work. We see the beautiful photograph, but I, I had a feeling that there were lots of photos being taken and that we were seeing the finished product of lots of, long hours of work to actually get that one photo and that one blog post and recipe. Yeah, sometimes we even take the pictures and then when we are going to do the editing, I realize that I don't like it. So <laughs> I have to do it all over again. Yeah, we, we just did last week. We had to do something next day and like, you know what, we have to do all that all over again because I really don't like it. So that's, but it's fun. Okay. And um, have you ever made a recipe that you're like, oh, that does not taste good, but you still did the pictures, and you're like, we're going to use it, but the, I did something with the, I, I broke something when I was actually making it, but it still looks good? Uh, no, because no. I, I, before taking pictures, I taste the recipe. I When it's a recipe that I have in my mind, I create recipes in my mind. I'm like, oh, I'm going to do this recipe with this and this ingredients and this. I do it. I do it first for us to see if I, we like it. And if I don't like it, then I do it again. And then I will going to do it again until we, I'm happy with the results. And then because I always think that somebody else is going to be in their kitchen and is going to go to the supermarket and buy the ingredients. And I don't want them to waste their money. I want them... When they try a recipe, that they like what they are cooking. So when I post a recipe, it's because I try it before several times until I was happy about it. You do a lot of recipes, or at least a lot of the ones I've seen, with black beans. And, and yeah. I love black beans. And can you share with our listeners a little bit about where... What region of Mexico, or if they're used all over Mexico? Well, actually, uh, black beans are eaten mostly in the coastal side of the country, in both in the Atlantic and the Pacific, and in the south part of the country. Most of the peninsula, the Yucatan, from Tabasco, uh, Chiapas, Campeche, Yucatan, Quintana Roo, uh, the, the people uh, eat black beans and Veracruz, uh, Guerrero, uh, people eat black beans. That's the, the main beans that they eat are black beans. Yeah, I think they're, I, I, like I said, I absolutely love them. And what's interesting is that I use them because my father was Portuguese and I'll use them more mm -hmm. with the Portuguese dishes I make. And I'm like, ooh, I need to start okay. making them with some of my Mexican dishes because that's what you're doing, and it looks amazing. So like, ah. I need to try that. Definitely need to you, try You know that. what? There, there is a lot of 
they are used a lot for filling for, for tamales, um, for the enfrijoladas. We even make candy with black beans. There are candies that are made with black beans. Atole, we make atole with black beans. Oh, I did not know that. So my mother's family was from the state of Jalisco. So, oh, okay. yeah, so doing, she mostly used pinto beans. Um, and then one of my mm -hmm. tias, she does, she did a lot with Peruvian beans, um, which, mm -hmm. so, but I've got to try this black bean thing that you're doing. Cause like I said, I love them. And I'm like, Oh, I could do them with enchiladas and other dishes. Yum. <laughs> So yeah, yeah, so yeah, so feeling for a lot of things. Uh, yeah, yeah, I have met people from the north of Mexico that never in their life had tried black beans, and I was surprised when somebody told me I, I was making a, a fresh pot of black beans and I invited them to my house. I'm like, oh, do you want to try a bowl of black beans? And like, oh no, why? I said, why no? I have never tried them. I have never tasted them. I have a wow, they are delicious. <laughs> <laughs> well, recently I, I had some um, guests that came over kind of unexpected. And the only thing I had was some of my Portuguese black beans in the refrigerator. But I made um, chimichangas with them. And they had, mm -hmm. like, they were kind of like this Portuguese with a tortilla fries. So they're kind of this hybrid. <laughs> but they were good. Yeah. But I have to yeah. try to do. Well, for, for people... For people that have a, an, an Instapot, I have on the blog a recipe how to make it on the Instapot, and, and they take like you make it in a, in a clay pot. They taste really, really good. We usually add garlic and onion and a little bit of fat. It could be oil or it could be lard at the end, but uh, it does, it, when you add that, the, the broth kind of thickens a little bit. Yeah, I love them. They're one of well, I love beans. I grew up eating lots of beans, so <laughs> I definitely still, I definitely love beans. So I have to to check that recipe out. Thank you for sharing that. So for for anybody that's listening to us, do you have any advice um, if they're thinking about starting their own business? Do you have any thoughts about that? Well, um, one of the things is that. You have, you have to do what you like to do. And, and you have, I think you have to do something that you like and keep doing it. Don't, uh, it, it, at the beginning, if things doesn't look well, just keep doing it because a business needs persistence. You have to keep doing it. Uh, things don't come like from one day to another. It takes time. It, it, yeah, that's what I would say. You have to have perseverance, keep doing it, and keep doing the best, the best thing that you can do. I think that's really great advice to just keep at it. Because I think sometimes it's very easy because it's hard to stop <laughs> to think about something. So mm -hmm. <laughs> definitely. And is there is there anything else that you want to share with our listeners? I sure have enjoyed speaking with you, and I know that we're almost out of time. So, uh, the the only thing that I would can add is that if if you want to learn to cook Mexican food, that always try to visit the Latin stores and find the ingredients there. Because uh, those small business have the authentic yeah. ingredients that are going to make your meal as close as possible as some a, as a Mexican meal. And thank you for sharing that, because you're absolutely right. And I know that my my husband, who is not Latino, has told me that um, many years ago that I ruined him for Mexican food. <laughs> so we live in California. So there's a lot of Mexican restaurants. We like. Oh. It's not like what you make at home. I'm like, nope, it's not like what you make at home. <laughs> so, no, it's different. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, Millie, it has been such an honor to talk to you. Because like I said, I have been following you on Instagram and checking out your recipes on your site. You're such an inspiration. I love 
that you are sharing your wisdom and your culinary passion with all of us and encouraging to cook in our kitchens and cook delicious Mexican food. So, and I'm super excited for your book. Maybe after you have your book, we can have you back. That would be really fun. But Oh, yeah, that would be nice. Mm-hmm. Yes. Muchísimas gracias yeah. you for being on our show. Oh, gracias a ustedes. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for following me. And I hope you have a great evening. You too. I want to thank all of our listeners for joining us tonight. Remember to add the most important ingredient to every recipe you make your love. And as my mama always said to me, as we said our goodbyes, que Dios te bendiga. May God bless you. Many thanks to our fabulous producer, Ade. Thank you for tuning in to Molly Mama Cooking with Love.